Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be reviewing the Revelate Spinelock Saddle Pack. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO113. So, what is this product? Um, the Spine Lock is a bike packing bag that mounts under your saddle behind your seat post, and then the bag extends outwards behind the saddle, giving you quite a lot of storage space. Um, this one comes in two sizes, uh, either a 10 liter size or a 16 liter size. I, of course, got the bigger one um, because, you know, I'm obsessed with uh, cargo capacity on my bike. Um, this is one of the biggest saddle packs out there. Um, there's there, there are a couple that I found from Ortlieb and Apidura that both have just, just like half a liter or more of um, storage capacity. But um, they are shaped very, very differently, and I have tried out the the Ortlieb one, so I'll be able to compare those a little bit in this review. Before we get into that, though, a quick little note about, yeah, why why would you want one of these instead of just using like a bunch of uh, big old panniers, right? Because with panniers, you can get very, very large cargo capacities um, for you know for less price um, comparatively but um, these are for the these saddle packs are for bike packing so like real off-roading uh, instead of for touring which is what usually you would think of for panniers um, so yeah when you're when you're really getting off-road there um, you know having a real bumpy ride cargo racks and panniers uh, can give you a lot of trouble since they flex and shift weight around so um, typically with bike packing you want to have everything kind of strapped directly to the frame of your bike as much as possible um, so that's where these these types of bags come into play so this type of bag is mostly intended for like lightweight compressible items like uh, clothing or sleeping bags um, and it does a really really good job of like not sagging if you do put too much weight in um, I, I would worry about stressing like the seams too much though and we'll get into this a little bit more uh, when we start talking about durability and repairability later in the episode. Um, but also, yeah, like a, a big reason to not put too much weight into this bag is that it does affect handling in a significant way because this bag sits way, way above the your bike's center of gravity. Um, Especially if you have like really long legs like mine and your seat is very, very high up. Um, but yeah, so I, I stress tested this bag uh, by carrying 18 cans of soda in it um, just for like a quick 30 minute ride. And it performed really well. Um, it, it didn't sag at all. Uh, well, it sagged a little bit, but like not significantly. Um, and uh, it, it did make handling a little bit tougher, like I said. Um, but, um, and, and, I, and I would worry if I did that consistently, uh, I would worry that maybe the, the adhesives that hold the bag together might not uh, handle that super duper well. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to mainly <laughs> stick with trying to have just lightweight compressible items in this bag from now on. Speaking of packing uh, 18 cans of soda into this thing, um, that is pretty much the exact same like stress test that I put the Ortlieb seat bag through. Um, but uh, yeah, the the shapes, the different shapes of these two bags makes a huge difference. So even though the Ortlieb has like on paper, it's uh, it's half a liter larger than the Revelate Spine Lock. Um, the fact that the Ortlieb bag like tapers down a bunch you know it starts off very very wide but then tapers down to a little point uh, at the end that makes it very difficult to pack stuff into it which is not a problem with the revelate spine lock um, the spine lock has a fairly consistent um circumference uh of of like you know from the bag opening on downwards um, of course at the very very end yes it does have to kind of uh, end at a point, um, but it's it's a much more gradual tapering down than uh, a lot of other 
saddle packs that you might see. So it, it, despite the fact that, yeah, it's technically smaller, I did find it actually easier to pack all of those uh, cans into, into the bag. Um, also, when packing, you know... <laughs> The cargo that that these bags were intended for like a, a large large sleeping bag i found it easier to stuff a large sleeping bag into the uh, spine lock than into the ortlieb um because yeah once again like it's it's easier like i i could fit my arm all the way down into the spine lock to like help stuff the the sleeping bag and compress it down into the bag um whereas with with the ortlieb uh seat pack i had to actually grab um <laughs> my microphone stand here and use that as kind of like a ramrod to to push uh to to really squish the uh sleeping bag down into the bottom of the bag um but yeah the, the spine lock that's not a problem. Uh, I've been able to uh, pack it effectively uh, without without too much trouble. Another uh, significant difference that I've found is that um, with the spine lock, even even when it's empty, it it does roll down nice and compact and kind of keeps uh, keeps its shape. Um, which was you know that was an issue with the uh, the Orlib that it kind of became this like floppy mess whenever. Uh, it was it was empty and I tried to roll it down nice and compact um, but the spine lock you know it 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 can do very well either empty or full now there is also an elastic strap on top of the spine lock um, which lets you like attach small items to the top um, but honestly this isn't one of this bag's strong suits um, it's like the strap is only one loop it doesn't like cross over itself at all um and it's also like way too close to the saddle itself to be able to put anything terribly large there because yeah if you get if you have stuff that's uh that's too big on top of the bag then it starts to like bump up against uh the back of your butt while you're riding and you know that's like we can't have that um, but I did find that like draping a pair of boots over the top of the bag works really well. I just used like the boots um, uh, shoestrings themselves to, to tie the boots uh, to to the bag and, you know, have those just kind of hanging off of the sides. Um, so that's, you know, it, it is a versatile enough bag, um, despite the fact that like the elastic that's built into it uh, doesn't doesn't lend itself super well to strapping large items to it. I also I've tried to get clever with a little bit of the extra packing stuff that I've done with this bag. Um, during one of my rides, I tried to kind of slot my sleeping pad into like the the donut hole that's created when by the roll to close mechanism you know so when, when you when you use the rolls when you, when you roll it closed then you have to snap those two buckles together and you know those two buckles like that creates kind of this hole uh with the whole roll closed space there um so yeah i tried to kind of you know i figured that's a tight enough space that i can put like stuff my my sleeping pad into that spot and it's tight enough that it'll stay in place um, but that's not the case it uh it did slide out because that hole is kind of you know it's it's vertically oriented so I, like when i started going over bumpier uh surfaces it started to wiggle its way out um and uh yeah so so i would stick if you if you want to have like your sleeping pad or something like that um attached to this bag like stick to the elastic band that's on top of it um i did take the sleeping bag liner that i had along with me um the bag for that one has just kind of like a little loop that uh that allows you to i i i put the the webbing strap uh, for the spine lock through that little loop um, so that that bag was kind of hanging underneath the spine lock and that worked pretty well um, because I've got enough clearance between my, the, the spine lock and my tire uh, for that kind of thing. Another strong point of this bag is the air valve. Um, so, you know, when you're, when you're using the roll close 
mechanism it traps a lot of air inside and so that air needs to have some way to get out um, and the the air valve on on this spine lock is this kind of really nice like it's a it's a twist you, you you twist it like a quarter turn counterclockwise to open the valve um, and then uh, when when you've gotten all that air out and you want to close it up again you just twist it quarter turn clockwise again um and it works really really well uh it's it's not hard to like manipulate that that mechanism um unlike the <laughs> unlike the pull tab that was on the the ortlieb um it works it works much much better this bag also has multiple slots built onto the back of it for you to like mount a rear light um but those slots are like really tight they're you know they're very they're flush with the uh fabric of the bag itself and so like when the bag is is packed up with lots of stuff inside it like it's pressed those slots are pressed so hard against the uh fabric of the bag that i that i couldn't really get my rear lights like um mounting loop through those um, those slots. So what I often end up doing uh, when I'm strapping my my rear light to it is I just like I strap it to the the webbing that holds the bag up, um, and that seems to be a pretty that's a pretty good spot, and that's consistently available uh, for me to be able to put my light on, and there's there's nothing behind it, you know, that gets in the way of like the light being visible. All right, so so far, most of the stuff that I've been saying about this bag, you know, sounds great. Um, like, why, why would you want to buy a different bag besides this one? Um, <laughs> and I would say the, the main reason that you might want to look at other bags would be the co compatibility challenges with this bag, right? Um, so you, you have to, there, there's a lot of things that could get in the way of this bag being mountable on your bike so let's talk about those things um first of all and this is like one of the big selling points of this bag is that it, it mounts to your bike with a custom little like bracket thing um so you so you mount that bracket onto the rails on the bottom of your saddle um and then the bag itself like uses a pin to attached to that bracket so the bracket always stays on your bike and then you just like slide out this pin to remove the bag um but that means that that the bracket needs to work with whatever saddle you have on your bike um specifically on the website on on Revelate's website they do warn you that this bracket will not fit on brooks saddles so i know that those are very popular um so if you have a brooks saddle sorry you cannot use this bag um and and I can confirm, like I, I did not read that before I got this bag. Um, but uh and and one of the bikes that I have here at home does have a Brooks saddle. So I, I discovered that the hard way that it was not going to work on that particular bike. Um, but it does work on the uh, WTB saddle that I've got on my main touring bike, which was the important one for it to work with. Um but other than that, like I don't have a whole lot of different saddles available to me to like try this bag with. Um, so, and I can't really think of a good way for like you at home to check your saddle before you know w without actually having access to this bag already. So, um, yeah, as if you don't have a Brook saddle, then you know try try this out. Maybe it'll work. Um, also. The other compatibility issue is that you have to have at least 21 centimeters of clearance between the bottom of your saddle and your rear tire. Um, now, I knew I I almost didn't even bother to go and like measure my uh, bike because I've got such long legs. I knew that it would like there's no way that they made a bag that would take up so much space that it would be incompatible with my bike. Um, but I, I did go and measure it just on a whim, and I discovered that I actually do have enough clearance on my bike to be able to put this bag on as well as my cargo rack for my panniers. So not only do I have 21 inches of clearance between my saddle and my tire, I have 21 inches of clearance between my saddle and my cargo rack. So yes, I can have my cake and eat it too in this case. <laughs> So yeah, go and uh, make that measurement 
and as long as you've got 21 centimeters of clearance and you don't have a brook saddle i'd say that you are clear to at least try out this bag and see if it works all right so let's talk about that that mounting bracket a little bit more so this is marketed as being like the the secret sauce for keeping this bag from swaying around right that's kind of a the biggest issue that you might have with um with saddle packs is like that they're they're very high up and the the like amount of like contact point the amount of surface area that they contact your bike versus the amount of like you know surface area or volume that they've got um of of gear that's packed into them right uh it's it's a, it's a very low ratio so you might you know you can have a lot of like swaying around shifting of weight um which is not good uh when you're especially when you're off-road riding um so this this bracket is supposed to be like uh you know the the main element that keeps this bag from swaying around um and i am happy to report that I'd say that it works as advertised. I've been very pleased with it. Um, haven't had any issues with, uh, you know, I haven't noticed like the weight shifting around on the bag. Um, I have like strapped things to the outside of the bag that were kind of, you know, loose and, and could sway around on their own. But, you know, that's on me for doing that. Um, so other than that, you know, I haven't had any, uh, any issues. Now, um, the fact that you've got this bracket that you know the the bag attaches to it with like a pin and then you have to strap a couple of of webbing straps on either side of the pin to make sure that the pin doesn't fall out and you know those help to cinch up the bag as well so that it like stays in place etc cetera, etc cetera. um that means that like if you, if you do want to take the bag on or off of your bike it it is kind of a multi-step process but that process also feels a lot less futsy than like trying to thread some straps through the saddle railings each time that you are taking it on or off, um, which is, you know, that's the case for a lot of other saddle packs that um, just use like just regular straps and buckles to, to attach to the bottom of your saddle. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'd say, you know, the it's not a bad thing this this uh this bracket like mounting mechanism it's pretty easy to do uh once you've once you've got a little bit of experience with it once you've done it a few times um and the bag itself is not very inconvenient to carry around if you if you do take it off of the bike you know it's like the the roll close mechanism forms this nice little handle and everything so um yeah i like it it's a good bag all right, let's talk about durability and repairability. So, um, yeah, the the bag itself feels really sturdy and solid. Um, I haven't I haven't uh, noticed any issues with anything like looking stressed or you know separating or anything like that. Um, looking at the you know doing a nice little inspection of the bag itself um they have used stitching in most of like the weight bearing places which is a really good sign that's um that's a big point in favor of uh the durability of this bag um but there are a lot of other places where they just use adhesive um to you know like attach multiple layers of fabric to each other um but those once again those places are not really load bearing so um, hopefully they won't have any issues with like, you know, coming apart or anything. Um, unfortunately though, um, Revelate did use rivets to attach all of like the hard elements to the bag. Um, so if anything goes wrong with any of those, uh, spots, like they're not going to be repairable. I'm not going to be able to replace any of those parts on the bag. Um, because you just you you can't really like a repair shop won't be able to take those rivets out without also ripping the fabric of the bag um, in all likelihood. So yeah, if I were if I were going to ask Rel Revelate to change anything about this bag, um, I would probably uh, yeah I would encourage them to not use rivets and instead use like screws um, to attach those things so that they could be you know removed and serviced by uh, either the user or by 
uh, a repair shop more easily. And finally, let's talk about the aesthetic of the bag. Um, so, I mean, it's Revelate. So, of course, it's going to be a black bag with red straps, red highlights, right? Um, which, you know, I'd say that that's probably my second favorite color scheme uh, available. Um, you know, pretty good. Doesn't really line up well with the, like, sky blue of uh, my touring bike. But, you know, you can't have everything. Um, so, I don't know. It's a good looking bag. It's very, very serious. Very, like, I'm going to be out there camping. I am a serious outdoorsy camper person uh, kind of aesthetic. So, you know, it, I mean, which is exactly what the bag is for. So that's it for the Revelate Spine Lock. Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion. Um, I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. This episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any or all of it as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which once again is thenexus.tv slash SO113. If you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, you can do so on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash thenexustv. And if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make technology-focused podcasts, uh, you can do so on our Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.